Greetings. Tonight we're going after the Andromeda Galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy is a galaxy in the constellation of Andromeda. It's about two and a half million light years uh, and believe it or not it's on a collision course with our own Milky Way Galaxy. So we will collide with the Andromeda Galaxy here in probably about four and a half billion years. Uh, of course unless they make some major medical breakthroughs we probably won't be here to see it. This is a rig we'll be using tonight. We've got the William Optic Z61 right here. This will give us the right field of view to fit all of the Andromeda Galaxy in, but not a lot extra. So perfect field of view, the William Optic Z61. It's riding on top of the Ioptron CEM60 mount. I've got some view heaters on here with the uh, Thousand Oaks view heater controller. Uh, to control the keep the uh, view off of the lens. Uh, if you move on back and take a look at the image train here, uh, I've got the uh, William Optics uh, rotator and spacer on here, so I can just loosen this little nut up and rotate my camera. That makes it very convenient for framing. Uh, I'm using the ASI 1600mm Pro. It's a mono chrome dedicated astronomy camera that's hooked right into my eight position filter wheel right here this is just the ZWO eight position filter wheel this filter wheel is very convenient uh, because I can put all of my narrow band and broadband filters in the same wheel and then I even put a light pollution filter in the eighth position uh, you'll see right here uh, on this just this side of the filter wheel I've got a spacer that's to help me get the correct backspacing from the last piece of glass to my camera sensor. Hooked onto the spacer here, I've got the ZWO off-axis guider and plugged into the off-axis guider, what I'm using for the guide camera is the uh, Starlight Express Lodestar X2 guide camera. So that's the setup we're using for tonight. If you look right up here, I have modified my telescope uh, I hooked it up so I can pick up the entire light spectrum. Uh, this apparatus up here will allow me to pick up uh, infra infrared wave. It will also allow me to pick up uh, microwave, uh, x-rays, and hopefully even uh, gamma rays. And if you believe that, I've got some swamp land for sale in Florida. Now, it doesn't do any of that stuff. I, it's just that this telescope was not designed to go on this mount. Um, so I can't achieve balance in the declination axis without adding all this extra weight onto the telescope. Now my wife bought me some ankle weights that I could strap around here that would look more professional maybe, uh, but I lost them so she's got to get me some more. But until then I used what I had to add weight onto the end of the telescope so I could get balance in the declination axis. Now let me show you something about the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, right here, where the pointer's at, that's Polaris, the North Star. Now the night sky rotates around Polaris like this, counterclockwise direction. So I'll run that uh, fast forward, and you notice that the North Star doesn't move. It stays there, uh, and then the sky rotates around Polaris. So Andromeda... Uh, from where I live in central Florida comes up right here in the northeast and then it's going to trace an arc along the sky like this as it rotates around Polaris and it's going to come on around and set back here in the northwest so I'll run that forward for you and let you see what it looks like so let's watch that happen there it goes that's pretty neat right if you want to watch it go backwards. All 
That's pretty neat. That gives you a good idea how, about how the night sky works overall. I'm going to show you what that looks like from my house. Uh, Polaris is right yonder. I'm showing you this in the day so we can pick out some features on the horizon. Uh, Polaris sits right yonder. You can't see it, obviously, because it's daytime. Uh, so that's north. Now, for me, northeast is right there. So I just find that ridge vent on my roof, and I know that Andromeda is going to come up right on top of that ridge vent. Uh, then it's going to, like I said, it's going to arc across the sky and then look back over here to the northwest, which is right here. And you see that tall tree right there? Andromeda's going to sit right behind that tall tree. Now, I have filmed the Andromeda galaxy before, but it was only like the second or third deep sky object ever in my life I had ever filmed. And I think I can do it a lot better. Now, I have been riding this small Z61 on my Skyguider Pro, but tonight I want to go for some 10 minute exposures on the HA, and I want to do a minimum of five minutes for my uh, broadband. And I don't think I can achieve five minutes on the Skyguider Pro. So that's why I went ahead and set it up on here. Anyhow, this will be my second attempt at the Andromeda Galaxy. I hope it's better this time. I'm Coma. You're watching Coma Astrophotography. Okay, the Andromeda Galaxy. Here we sit pointing up here towards the North Celestial Pole. There's Polaris right there, uh, right after the polar alignment. Of course, you can see uh, here sets the Andromeda Galaxy right up here. So it hasn't crossed the meridian yet. Uh, we got a couple more hours before we get to that point. So the way we're going to get on this galaxy, we're going to go from right here. Uh, we're going to head off this way, and we're going to stop right here on this star in Cassiopeia, called Shadar. Uh, right there, we'll do a focus. We'll do a mount synchronization, and then it's just a quick hop right on up there to the Andromeda galaxy. You'll see right here facing north. If you look uh, right up to the North Pole and keep going straight on up north, you'll see the constellation here of Cassiopeia. Now this is how I find Andromeda in the night sky. You go out and find Cassiopeia, and th then, uh, let me see, I'll zoom this in a little bit if I can. So you see these two stars in the M part of Cassiopeia, the squash leg, and then the two right next to it. If you make a line with those stars and follow them on out like this, they run right up there just to the left of the Andromeda galaxy. And if I back this out just a little more, uh, these lines, as they point on out, they point kind of to this star right out here. And you can see that with your eye at night. So line these stars up here, make them point towards this star, and about halfway on the right, you see uh, Andromeda galaxy. Anyhow, that's how you find it. Okay, I'm going to get ready to do some plate solving. So, on my camera, I'm going to make sure that I'm on my luminance filter. Filter change. And I want to make sure I've got five seconds set uh, in the exposure. Now I'm going to head on over to Point Craft. That's the, my plate solving tool. I'm going to go to the stars tab and call up the star Shadar. Right here, you see it's in Cassiopeia. That is now under the Go To++ plus plus hammer. So, I got to turn my mount on. Done. Now just click the Go To++ plus plus button and the mount is going to slew right on over to Shadar. And there it goes, you can hear it going. Now it might not land right on Shadar. If it does, we'll see Shadar come up here right here in the center. But it may not be there. But it doesn't matter if it gets on the wrong spot. Deep sky clock it's event. Gonna, it's going to take a picture, do a plate saw, figure out where exactly it's pointed at, and then it'll make an adjustment to get over on Shadar where it needs to be. So it's done slewing. So here comes the picture to see where it's really at. Exposure started. Exposure started. If it went to the right spot, Shadar will be right here in the middle. Exposure, Exposure finished. finished. Did not go to the right spot. But guess what? That's how it always happens. But no matter, because it did a plate solve, it knows where it's at. It got within 6,700 pixels. It Exposure just started. Adjustment. Now it's going to... Exposure finished. Take another picture. See, did it get it right this time? 
and it's pretty close you can see there it's going to make a small adjustment it got within 72 but i told it to get within 50. so this next uh, picture it's going to be dead exposure started. exposure started exposure finished go to plus plus finished there's Shadar, right dead in the center. So I'm going to click on the sync button. Now the mount knows that it's pointed exactly at Shadar. Let's just go take a peek at it in Stellarium to make sure. And yes, there we are. Uh, pointed right at Shadar, just like we thought. So all is well. Now we just need to do the focus. So I'm going to go put the Batonov mask on. And I will be right back with you when I get the Batonov mask on. Okay, Batonov mask is on, and if you don't know what a Batonov mask is, it, uh, it puts these spikes across the star. You see these spikes here? Now, if we zoom in on that using the magnifier, the way you know you're in perfect focus is if this spike right down the center splits that X exactly, and, and that, that is focus. Now... It looks like we're pretty doggone close to focus right now. I may just have to make a small adjustment. Uh, but that doesn't surprise me because this scope holds its focus as long as the temperature is uh, kind of the same. Let's see. We'll tool, batten off aid. Now the batten off aid will give us an exact read on how far out we are from focus so so we seem to be just a teeny tiny bit out of focus like we thought so i'm going to make a small adjustment and i'll be right back with you <coughs> okay i made several small adjustments but uh we're in focus now i'll remove the batonov mask and we'll be ready to get right on over to the andromeda galaxy so we'll call up our deep sky objects, the Andromeda Galaxy. I, I believe it's M31. Yep, there it is right there. So that is now under the GoTo++ plus plus hammer. So off we go to the Andromeda Galaxy. And while it's getting there, I'm going to go throw the ball for Venus so she gets happy and stops barking. All right, GoTo++ plus plus says we're on the Andromeda Galaxy. Guess what? I can see it right here. Now, this was a one-second shot. Let's sync them out so it knows where it's at. And we'll take a look in Stellarium, but I can guarantee you we're dead on top of the Andromeda Galaxy. There it is. Now, I'm going to rotate the camera just a little bit because I want to go corner to corner. Um to fit the, as most of it in there as possible. So I'm going to rotate the camera to the right just about, what's that, probably 15 degrees. And uh, I'll show you what I want it to look like. Let's see, to the right. Yeah, there's 15 degrees to the right. Uh, so I'm going to go take that, do that camera rotation. Then we'll take another shot and see, did we get it just right? Okay, let's see if uh, I got that right. So here's another one second shot. Exposure started. Exposure, started. Exposure, Exposure finished. finished. Image solved. Image solved. Uh, I think I'm getting a phone call. Uh, I'll be right back with you when this phone call is over. Okay, I like this orientation framing. Looks like we're ready to go on the Andromeda Galaxy. Next, we uh, get guiding going. Okay, it looks like uh might have a little focus issue on the guide camera here. So, let's go ahead and get that taken care of. Use this star. It's going to calibrate. While it's cal calibrating, we'll take a look at our imaging plan. Now, I'm going to do uh, three-minute exposures uh, for the broadband, luminance, red, green, and blue. And here for the HA, you see I've got a uh, ten-minute exposure set up. So I'm going to get about uh, twice as much luminance as I do red, green, and blue. So we're going to bump this up to 30. 
So there's our plan. We're going to go with 30 luminance and then 15 red, green, and blue. That's each of three minute exposures. I've got three hours of HA exposure at uh, 10 minutes. I, I don't think we'll get through all of this, but uh, we'll, we'll get uh, started on this and see where to go from here. Okay, we're guiding, so yeah, we'll go ahead and get this imaging plan going. Exposure started. And I will be back with you when we get our uh, first uh, luminance frame on the Andromeda Galaxy. Here's our guiding here. Looks like it's holding around uh, 0.83 total RMS error. Uh, that's going to be perfectly okay for this uh, wide field view. Okay, our first frame, our first three minute frame on the Andromeda Galaxy is coming in here in about three seconds. Let's Exposure watch it. Exposure finished. In. Dithering started. And there it is. I like that. You can see the uh, you can see the galaxy just in the raw frame. You can see some of these dust lanes around here, uh, running through here. Uh, you can see the uh, smaller Dithering galaxy finished. down here. You can see the full Exposure extent. started. As it comes around like this, we are frame good. Now it looks like that center might be blown out, but it's not. Let me show you why. If we turn, if we clear the histogram, remember this has got an auto stretch on here. So let's turn off the auto stretch, and you'll see that the center of that galaxy is uh, uh, not really blown out at all. Well, we can work with that. I'll go ahead and put the stretch back on so we can see the rest of it, though. So I'm, I like what I see. Uh, if we keep getting stuff like this, I think we're going to end up with a really good picture.